Um, today, we're going to be talking again about easily finding uh, federal buyers, right? And, and I'm going to dive deeper into this in a second. But before I do, help uh, me and buyers know who you are. Get your core competency into the chat. Your company name and your core competency with two, three words um, is perfect. Uh, I saw a mitt in here yesterday. He used to have a longer one. And yesterday it popped to me right away as data analytics and artificial intelligence. And that's exactly what I'm recommending you do is to try to have something like that because it's just a hook, right? They, they, you might have heard something called an elevator pitch. Well, in order to deliver an elevator pitch, you need to be on the elevator riding up. And what I'm suggesting is you need a hook to get in the elevator. You know? So data analytics and artificial intelligence is a good hook. Come on, admit, let's ride the elevator. You tell me what else you do. And then he can go in talking about how he does uh, so much more with it, right? And and that's his job, not mine. But uh, I love that. And so I want uh, that to be part of what you're telling. So get your company name and your core competencies in there. Um, today, we're going to talk about the third step of the seven-step process for federal revenue success. Step three, targeting, uh, it's about finding federal buyers. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about uh, outreach, and Friday, we'll talk about um, relationship building, how to build relationships in the federal market. So make sure you've registered to attend those sessions. Uh, before we go, I want to share my screen really quick. I forgot that I wanted to do this, but this is really important, so let me do this. Um, let me click on this and this. I just want to drop. I wanted to thank people, uh, you, for engaging, right? When we do this training and you engage in con uh, the chat, whether it's something like giving it a thumbs up or you're putting a core competency or when I say, hey, if, it, if you understand what I'm saying, put silver bullet in, that's engaging. And when you do that, you're not only making it really good for me and my team that uh, we're getting feedback from you. And, and, and that's basically you saying thank you every time you're kind of engaging. Uh, not that you have to, but we love it, right? But it's also a way for you to engage all of these people. I mean, I'm hoping you can see my screen, right? Um, and this is just people from yesterday. We didn't even go far, <laughs> farther back yet. Um, and, but we're going to put people who are engaging in here. I want you to make sure that you're seeing your name for sure if you've already engaged and I missed it accidentally. Sorry. Um, but the other thing I want you to keep in mind is that I'm providing you sales training every day, but you are also coming into a community of uh, government contractors, whether it's uh, businesses that are selling to the government, people like PTAX and small business development centers, uh, those representatives are in here and buyers are in here. Uh, we have small and large businesses. We have Dell and IBM in here and we have uh, very small businesses like you might be in. And so uh, I, first off, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming to the training and thank you for engaging with it. It makes it so much better. The other thing I would like you to know is that um, right here, you can see the names. I want to start putting one word. You know how I say two or three words? One word that describes your company core competency, that one hook um, right here. And, you know, like Hunter, I know is, you know, they've got a bunch of words, but SharePoint, right? Rafa, you might put uh, elevators. Anybody who looks at elevators is going to see your, your construction type company buildings, not IT, right? So these one words, and it's not for the buyers. It's really, I'd like to have this here as a reminder to each of you. And at certain points, I might just hand this out and say, hey, you should be connecting with each other out there. So that was just a really quick stop over. Uh, again, thank you very much for um, uh, for engaging. Okay, so let's dive into the training for today, which is targeting. And let me just look to make sure I'm not doing the scroll bar. Okay, we're good. Um, sorry, hold on one second. Perfect. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, just one more thing. If you don't know Gus Phelps, right? He's on here every day. I'm the, I'm the face in the front. He's the face in the back kind of thing. And uh, he's the one here making sure that you've got the links, et cetera, that you need. And so um, he's on the team and that's why you see him dropping links in particular. Got a lot of people who are on, who are ambassadors for us. Um, but Gus is the one who helps prepare this every day with me. So, uh, you know, thanks for giving him a shout out there for those of you who are doing that. Okay. So let's talk about targeting and the purpose of targeting. Uh, one of the first things I want to show you just, just as a reminder to any of you who keep coming, right? And then new for some of you, this is the seven step federal process uh, for, for federal revenue success. And this process, um, we're gonna be talking about targeting, but before I get to that, I just wanna help you reverse engineer this thought. I talked about it in a previous training 
where I went into the seven step process. But I want you to look right here at sales. In order to have sales, we must have proposals, right? This, this just makes sense. And, and everything that is a process, anything that um, is driving us towards success, it shouldn't be complex. It should be easy to understand. It might be hard work to do, right? I gotta, I gotta do some heavy lifting, but I should be able to understand that if I want sales, I need to send the government proposals. If I wanna send the government proposals, I need to have opportunities in my pipeline. If I wanna have opportunities in my pipeline, I must have relationships that I'm able to learn about opportunities and or develop those opportunities into winning proposals, right? In order to have relationships, I must reach out to people. I must network or I must send an email or pick up the phone. Somehow I have to outreach to people in order to develop relationships. And in order to outreach, I must know who I want to call. And that's finding the right people to call. That's what we're talking about today is targeting. And so whenever I talk about a topic, I really try to bring it back to these seven steps and for you to see how sales begins, really the, the outreach part of it uh, begins with targeting, not the outreach. I don't want to use that word, but the whole process of reaching out to the government and getting sales begins with targeting, right? Visibility is another step. And I explained it before. Uh, hopefully that makes sense there. So the purpose of targeting though, and I think you kind of get this already is, is threefold. First, determine your primary agency. I talk about this all the time that if you are a business under $10 million, or if you were a, uh, a company larger than that, but you're a business developer capture person, you should really be focusing on one department or agency. For example, the Department of Education or the Department of Navy. When you focus on many, you get distracted. When you focus on uh, one, you can go deep and wide within that department or within that agency. And I'll expand on that in a minute. Um, the next thing is, so determining a primary agency, but then you need to go lower. So if I said the Navy, I need to determine a command or an office within that department. Um, and so we'll expand on that, but you need to do that same thing. If, if you're looking at a department like HHS, well, what commander office would be below that, that that's really your primary target agency. And then the last purpose is of targeting is to find people with their contact information. Targeting is just about building a list of people you're going to reach out to. And this is not a lead list like a marketing campaign where you're trying to put a thousand names in, right? You don't want to do that. That's not specific targeting. I don't mind you doing that because you went to a conference and you downloaded, you know, 100 or 500 names from there. That's, that's a different activity. But when you're doing targeting in preparation of outreach to a primary agency, it's about finding people, their names, numbers, and email addresses, right? And so that's what we want to do there. Um, Okay, so uh, I described this already with the seven steps, but the first step to selling into an agency is targeting. You need to know who to sell to. And that's the first thing I want you to do. If you understand that sales begins with targeting, put targeting in the chat. Let me know that you're understanding what I'm saying there. And so, uh, by the way, if this is your first time, I tend to move really fast when I start talking about the topic of the day. Uh, it's just a fire hose. Look for your one or two nuggets and... Um, and hopefully at the end, though, you'll have tactical steps for you to be able to follow going forward. So if the first uh, part of what I'm talking about is the purpose of targeting, when you get into targeting and you know the purpose is to find people, well, who do you target? And I described already the three, the three groups that you want to pay attention to. And here I just want to expand a little bit. First thing is an agency or department. I have a whole separate video, number 47, that goes into this one training topic. How do I choose the right primary agency or department? Right, so that's number 47, Gus, you might drop that in if, if you got that. Um, but my number one piece of advice when you're looking for a department or an agency is to find an agency big enough to give you $25 million in annual revenue. Whoever you're targeting should be able to eventually get to this stage where you have one enough contracts that you're bringing in $25 million a year from that one agency alone. If you have four agencies like that at the end of 10 years, you've got a $100 million company, right? That's why we say go deep and wide, but make sure you're going deep and wide into an agency that can actually grow with you, right? There's no point in getting some past performance and then finding out they have no more money, really. But if you go into, let's just use a big one like DOD, right? It's way too big. But if you go into DOD or even just the Navy, you can grow easily a $100 million, $200, $300 million company just in that one department. You just kind of have to move. I have a friend who's got a $100 million company in CMS 
alone. That's one agency in HHS. He's just been there 20 years and he's got a massive amount of past performance and trust. He's able to beat out the competition because of that focus. And that's what I want you to remember when I'm talking about targeting down to one primary agency. The next thing is um, commander office. And I already talked about this a little bit, but you want to niche down to the actual buyers, the program office. So the Department of Navy doesn't buy. Uh, Nav C does, for example, or Nav War, right? And those are the those are called buying commands or system commands within the Navy. Well, every department out there has something similar. You know, USDA uh, Agriculture, they have um, the Farm Services Agency, I think, FSA. That's an example of an agency within a department. And so when you're coming in and you're picking your primary agency, before you say the Navy, come down to one of their eight or 10 buying commands and say, nav c or nav war those are my that's my um uh target command target agency so i'm niching down there and then when we get down to people we're talking about who exactly are you going to call right getting in the door needs a name uh people tell you hey you need to get in the door build relationships perfect how do i do that <laughs> so that's that's the whole idea behind targeting it's just targeting is just creating a list of names that are going to be the people you'll start to outreach to. Um, and so if it makes sense what I'm saying and finding people uh, begins with knowing what agency you're trying to get into and niching down to that target agency under a department, if it's big enough, tell me what agency you're going after, right? Are you going after the Department of Veterans Affairs? If you are, are you going after VBA or VHA? Are you going after the Veterans Benefit Administration or Veterans Health? In the chat, just tell me, what agency are you going after? And try to look at it and go, is that a department? Should I come down one level? And I guarantee if you're at the Navy level, Army level, I think you can come down. If you're at HHS, you can come down, right? Uh, department of Education, maybe not. Uh, USDA, probably not, If certainly if you're in the IT space, because I think they do things at department level. So try to you know figure that out. Um, even in the VA, you might stick at the department level. Um, but think about it there and put that name in there. While you're doing that, I wanted to show you another graph that it's important for everybody to just remember. Um, and I have a whole nether training that I dive into this, but I want to do this briefly, is that this is the adoption bell curve. Anytime you do anything, half the people, the innovators, early adopters, and early majority will do what you want. Some will, right? Some will do what you want. On the right-hand side, the late majority and the laggards, those people will not do it. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter whether it's in government contracting, in your church, in your neighborhood watch. It doesn't, you know, at your local pool, it doesn't matter. Um, half the people will do what you want. Half the people won't. The way I describe this in sales is some will, some won't, so what? And the reason I say this is in targeting, you're going to build a list of, let's say, 100 people. When you build that, just remember 50 of them might not take your call. Or when they do take their call, your call, they might go, ah, you're not for us, or they don't want to work with you, or whatever, right? It doesn't matter. In sales, we always say we need no's to get to yeses. If you think of it like gold mining, you're not looking for gold, you're removing dirt, right? When you remove dirt, there's a vein of gold that you can then mine. In sales, it's the same way. You just want to get that no, not that these no's are bad, right? You just want to get rid of the no's so you can get to the gold. And the gold are those customers and those teammates that want to work with you, that get what you're trying to sell or what you're trying to talk about. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully you've been putting uh, Army Corps of Engineers, DOD. Come on, Glenn. I'm going to go look, Glenn, are you like a huge, huge company? Glenn, by the way, I, Glenn, I just noticed this, that you and I connected when it was still called the Hub Zone Chamber of Commerce that I started back in 2018. So thanks for being here for the long haul. Um, Okay, so let's get to the last thing before I switch over to my uh, browser. And I wanna show you some of the ways I go try to find people. And, and, and by the way, when I did that activity, I realized, oh my God, I need like five days of showing you this. Um, so, so we'll get into that. But um, when I talk about targeting, I already mentioned this, but I wanna dig it again. I said department or agency. So number 43 is the video where you can see, um, so number 47 talks about, um, uh, my training number 47 talks about how to pick your agency, but video number uh, training number 43 that goes into the Navy. And the reason I'm saying this is because today my example is Navy. And so I chose it, but it's got this fantastic graphic that I, I should have grabbed and brought it so I can show you. But 
it shows you why when you focus on the Navy as an example, you have all these people who are related to each other. So as you find contacts, they lead to three friends, right? Uh, you know, these two people lead to these two people, lead to these four people, lead to these eight people, that kind of thing. It's so much easier when you're in the same agency. So if you haven't seen that training on the Navy, it's a great one. And then you just insert your own agency into what I'm training you there on. Number uh, 38 goes into the command and office and it talks about niching down. And this is where I, um, this is how I'm landing on today's example, which is PEO digital. It's where I sat there and said, look, I wanna go find SharePoint uh, in the Navy, who's buying SharePoint within the Navy. And in video 38, I show you how I discovered that they don't actually use the word SharePoint. I got to work on finding SharePoint, but uh, they, they named their SharePoint platform Flank Speed. And I was like, oh, well, the minute I found out that it was called Flank Speed, not the Microsoft term SharePoint, I was then able to find out that PEO Digital, Program Executive Office Digital, um, a major office within the Navy, I was able to find out that they're the ones who basically own SharePoint, right? Everybody uses it and I wanna reach everybody, but these are a great uh, group of people for me to start. So that's how I niched down from uh, selling to the federal government to selling to the Navy, selling to the Navy broad down to PEO Digital. And that's what led me to go into um, uh, who we're trying to find, right? And so you can go into training number 60, and I know I'm dropping a lot of trainings here, but that one goes into eight ways to find decision makers and I show you about finding them. Um, but when you go in there, you're gonna learn about these three types of people you're trying to find. Focuses of receptivity, focuses of dissatisfaction and focuses of power. The idea behind these three people is that power is the contracting officer. They're the ones who sign the check, but they don't have the need. Focuses of dissatisfaction are the program office. They're the ones with the challenge or the goals that you're gonna solve with your solutions or products. And then focus as a receptivity or like the small business specialist who will guide you through the Navy, for example, um, and give you some guidance or uh, make some introductions if it makes sense. So anyways, a lot of stuff there. I want to switch over and share my screen really quick because I know I'm just blowing through this pretty fast. Um, let me pop over here. By the way, if that part I'm talking about where everybody falls into one of those three roles makes sense while I'm sharing my screen, just put like role based into the chat. Um, you can actually do it uh, pretty quickly and I'm going to share my screen. Let me get off of that. So I have a lot of uh, tabs I was going to show you, but I think I really want to just drive down into FPDS. Um, FPDS, uh, although you can still use Sam, I mean, you can use Sam. FPDS, for those of us who love it, uh, is, is a good source data place. But it's a great place for me to come and say, well, I want to get into the Navy and I already know that PEO Digital is where I want to go. This is one method that I'm showing you today on how I go search for people. Um, I al already told you a couple of other videos that go into a lot of other methods, but this one I typed in PEO digital into the FPDS system, right? When it came back, it came back with a bunch of opportunities and, and I'm not gonna show you at the moment, but when I sorted them, the one that I liked was from Northrop Grumman uh, and it, it gives me different information. But what I was really trying to figure out is could I find a, a government person? And here I looked at Victoria Disman up here and it turns out she's probably not even remotely the right person because it looks like she's more of a, a, a seaport contract vehicle uh, personnel rather than somebody working in NAVWAR or a, a PEO Digital on the contracting shop. So I did some search, that name didn't do any good for me. But as I came down, I noticed that I thought the opportunity was $1 million related to SharePoint, some other stuff. What I see is that it's actually $168 million. I'm like, this is pretty awesome. And so as I come down and I'm trying to figure out where can I go, I can see that Nav War is where this is coming out of. Um, and I'm done with this one because what it did is it led me to go try to look for something else. And so instead, what I said was Booz Allen is the incumbent, the large prime who actually won a big contract. And so I just went to Google, right? That's all I typed here. I'm just showing you what I typed. No quotations, nothing special, just booze, PEO digital. And it came up with this stuff and I instantly started seeing things like this, right? Booze wins $190 million op, blah, blah, blah. And these are perfect because targeting is just research. You're just trying to get out there and research people. So uh, these kind of things, I clicked on them and I came here to this one as an example. NYWIC Pacific awards the contract. So NYWIC uh, is under 
um, nav war, right? They're, they're a, a subcommand to nav war. And so I'm able to come through and, and because I'm going really fast here, I'll tell you, I just went through here really fast looking for names. But in this one article alone, it gives me a lot of different uh, smaller program offices to go look at. For example, it talks about um, here, the Navy Enterprise Network, if I didn't know about it, the Navy Marine Corps intranet, um, uh, the, the information that they provide, I can chase it down. But what I really was looking for was Booz Allen. I wanted to, part of my outreach is to go knock on the door of Booz Allen and say, hey, we've been doing great work um, at Northrop. We can support you, right? Let's use that example. And so this guy here, I found this guy, Scott, he's a vice president over there. Uh, that's pretty high up there, but it's still fine because he's quoted in here and that's all I was looking for. So um, I want to just show you first where I found him. So then I, cause I'm going to come back to those other two really quick, but then all I did is came over here and I searched for Scott um, at Booz Allen. In this case, I typed in Ba cause I just happen to know Booz Allen is B-A-H in their emails. But what I was really looking for is anything in here. And there's a lot of different people talking about articles, but one of the first things I saw was here's the guy's email address, right? So I'm able to pull it up and I see this NDIA. It's an organization that supports the Navy um, and DOD in general, but I was able to come in and see within just a couple of minutes that this person is um, doing an event out there. And I think it was earlier in the year, uh, this year, right? But here's his email address. And so I instantly went from not knowing anybody about uh, at Booz. Well, actually, I didn't even know Booz was in Navy at SharePoint. So then I found uh, Booz is doing SharePoint work with the Navy. Then I found out Scott is somebody who's involved with these big contracts that are out there. And then I'm able to find this um, point of contact. And the cool thing is, if you've ever heard me talk about call plans, I say use an icebreaker. Well, here I can talk about, hey, Scott, I saw you mentioned in this article and I wanted to reach out to you on Business Wire. And I also saw you were uh, on this event. And so it seems like you're everywhere out there, Scott. That instantly will warm it up with Scott. Uh, remember, there's always some will, some won't, but at least I just found this person. If you use uh, this method, I can now begin to find Scott's peers. I can start looking at Scott and say, well, where else does he work? Um, so I wanted to come back here, a couple other articles that just popped up. As I'm looking for Booz Allen, right? Here's PEO Digital. And they just, uh, I can come in and begin to find out. It's like, okay, here are people that are out there, right? This is Ruth is just ahead and um, Barry. But if you go into the training that I mentioned earlier about how to find uh, find folks, you will see that I list out the entire PEO digital. Actually, I wonder if it does it here. Um, maybe it here, I'm just gonna click once. If it doesn't do it, I'm gonna go away. Uh, okay, so here are all the diff different PEO digital divisions or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I was able to find pretty quickly the names for everybody in here. This is outreach. I can begin to get in and have conversations with different people. Um, digital workplaces is unique to them. But me as a SharePoint person, that's no different than platform application activities that I might be talking about. So I can reach out to many of these people. Um, and, and easily in PEO digital, there's hundreds of people. Uh, so I see I'm getting down to five minutes. I wanted to show you one other thing. There's other articles that just uh, keep expanding on it. But the other thing that I noticed was in one of the articles I was reading, and I'll just come here and jump ahead. In one of the articles I was reading, remember I said I saw more content in there that I could follow up with. Well, part of who uh, Booz is supporting with what they're doing is inside of a, uh, I think it's Nav War, or maybe this is PEO Digital or whatever, but it's a program management warfare office called 205, right? So project office, whatever it's called. But all I did is copied this language and put in the word Navy and said, well, let me go search, right? And when I did, I instantly was able to come in and, and start doing initial research and go, oh, I'm outside of Nav War. And now I'm into Nav Air, which is another major buying command within the Navy. And I'm able to track on this guy, uh, Kevin McGee, who's um, program manager for this group. And uh, just long story short, right? I go search for him. Um, he actually doesn't have a ton on here, but he does have a LinkedIn profile. I'm able to go over to LinkedIn, slowly start trying to uh, chase him down that way. One other thing I wanted to say, just pointing out, and then um, I'll come back to this in a minute, is if you haven't gone to our website, GovCon Chamber, go over there. These are all free. 
and and uh, they're only gated if you want an update. Uh, if you want an ungated version where you don't even give me an email, uh, you know we don't care about it. We just want to update you. But this is a directory of federal small business specialists, over a thousand names. And as an example, in the Navy, we have over a hundred names in there of small business specialists. So those are focuses of receptivity. I would look in there to find people related to Nav War or Nav Air and call them and say, hey, we do SharePoint. Can we talk to you? Um, one other thing, while I'm stopping sharing, somebody asked me a question when I was doing this prep about um, what if, uh, like, what if they sit there and say, you should just go like this guy in the Booz Allen, you know, you should just go and get on our um, supplier portal, right? And, um, and sorry, I'm looking at the browser trying to move stuff around. Um, there's a whole video I have out there. And let me see if I referenced it. And Gus, maybe you can drop it in if I'm forgetting it. But um, yeah, I lost it, Gus, if you can put it in. But if somebody, if you're going in thinking somebody's going to look at you like you're small, you should go get in the supplier portal. I would submit it's because you're going in saying, hey, we're a hub zone for company, right? If I just beat up Bain Group, who's been my example through this whole thing with Hunter is that, and Greg, is that they do SharePoint and they've been doing it for 10 years for some of the largest companies in the world. When they go to Booz Allen to talk, they should say, hey, we've been supporting Northrop Grumman, one of the largest companies in the world, uh, maintaining their user base or whatever. Uh, we'd like to talk to you about that and maybe how we might support you in the Navy, et cetera. Well, now the conversation is starting off with, hey, you do technology and you've been doing it for Northrop? Oh my God, we should talk with you. You must be huge or something. But if I go in and say, hey, I'm a small business hub zone, then people are going to look at us like we're this small. They're, they don't mean to treat us that way. But if we're going to act like we're a small business, they're going to treat us like a small business. And small businesses in people's minds sometimes need to be treated with kid gloves and told what to do and almost patronized. But you're not a small business. You're a subject matter expert. You're a trusted advisor. And so if you go in that way, you're going to find that success comes out of that. So this is the farthest I've gotten to 1230. I'm surprised I'm this close on time. But uh, hopefully this is making sense. If it did, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to expand this all into five trainings um, so I can really dig into it for you. But remember, government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. And part of the process is knowing who you want to reach out to. That's the targeting we talked about today. I'll see you tomorrow for outreach.